Well, Will Smith and Chris Rock overshadowed what I thought was going to be the big story of the weekend, a heartbreaking story. Um, as you all know by now, beloved Foo Fighters drummer Taylor Hawkins has died. Oh, that's right. He died over the weekend on tour with the band in South America. Variety reports that without declaring that he died of an overdose, authorities in Colombia, Colombia, issued a statement on Saturday afternoon notifying that um, he had 10 different drugs in his system at the time of his death. The the report from the Attorney General of Colombia came in a tweet which said that uh, the 50-year-old musician, who I think just turned 50, had antidepressants, benzodiazepines, opioids, and THC. It did not further specify uh, what the drugs were. Uh, they did not use the word overdose. But apparently, I don't know how big a heart is supposed to be. Um, they said it, his was incredibly enlarged. It was reported that— like the Grinch. Yeah, exactly. Forensic doctors were shocked by the size of the drummer's heart at more than 600 grams and believe that was a factor in Hawkins uh, quickly succumbing to, quote, a cocktail of narcotics. And they were supposed to perform at the Grammys coming up, too. That's like in a few days. Oh, they were? Yeah. He was a real nice guy, yeah. by all accounts. Uh, and I met him a few times. He's a friendly guy. The whole band, it sort of was personal. Yes. Personable band. They We've just had come Chris say Chiffin. hi. And yeah, they, they'd all, and Pat Smear, and mm -hmm. they're all friendly. Dave's friendly. They're all friendly. I think I saw them backstage after they performed uh, over there with Stevie, with Stevie Nicks. Stevie Nicks uh, a few years back. Um, and he's also, and now he was also. Um, Alanis Morissette's drummer. I was just going to say that. Did you see that doc, that I, little doc I, on her? I did, and it was funny at a certain point because Alanis Morissette was going out there and her whole thing was about women empowerment yep. and all that stuff. And meanwhile, <laughs> all the dudes in the band were trying to bang 17-year-olds. And who when showed she up. found out, she was rip shit. She was like, we're talking about women empowerment. And they're like, no head, no backstage pass. You know, <laughs> yep. like 10 minutes after they did the yep. circle with the hand in, those guys went out to get blown by <laughs> groupies. Yeah, he said it was the best summer of his life. <laughs> yes, which is, uh, you know, it's hard to remove the biology from guys, yeah. especially when you're 19 That's and you're right. going, just do the right thing. It's like, yeah, really? <laughs> This seems like the right thing to do. Yeah. Oh, Vinny's online, oh. too. Vinny? Hey, man. How's it going? Good. Star Garden panic attack? <laughs> do tell. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was listening to the show today, and I had one panic attack in my life. It happened in the Star Garden in 1991. I had just moved to L.A. like a month earlier. And I, you got, here's the part you need to know. When I left New Orleans, I left a radio show that was successful, Talking Fitness with Vinnie Tortorich. I left, I, I had this gig at Newman School. That's where you know, the Manning kids went to school. Uh, I was their strength and conditioning coach. Uh, I was doing periodic television, and I was also the head guy at the biggest law firm in New Orleans. I built a whole fitness center in there, and I was their guy. So... In 1991, I was doing quite well financially, but I saw a problem, and it was children getting fatter. This was all the way back in 1991. I moved out to L.A. to talk to the people at Nickelodeon, to talk to people at Disney and everywhere else, and they all laughed me out of the office saying, we're not going to tell people to stop eating sugar. That's crazy. It's all their and advertising. I, I watched my whole life go down the drain like just overnight. And a buddy of mine, Big Daddy Callahan, said, come on, we're going out tonight. And he took me, it was right next to, he worked at the, the, the Sheridan Hotel, which was right down the street from that. He was the chef. And there was a strip joint right down the street called uh, the Star Garden. And just like you, 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 just like you said on the show, there was one small stage. There was like one or two pool tables, and that was it. There was it wasn't like strip joints I'd ever been in before. But I remember sitting there watching probably your girlfriend strip. Yeah, and Cuck. <laughs> hmm. I realized that I had just thrown away my entire life, and all of a sudden my chest got tight, and I, I started hyperventilating and. I'm sitting there at the stage, and I, I just basically lost. I ran out of the building you know, to try to catch my breath. 
Never felt that before or since. It is uh, the panic attack. If you ever have one, you will feel sorry for anyone who has them with any regularity. Mm -hmm. That that much I can tell you. So now he can't listen to uh, Cherry Pie without yeah. clutching his chest. They they played. <laughs> I can't remember all the songs, but they played. They did a deep cut over there. Can't remember if it was my ex girlfriend or not, but they played um, "Misty Green and Blue." I'm looking at you, Dawson. Um, which was a uh, God? We'll think of that. We'll think of that song for a second. That's uh, uh, the UFO song, and it was a crazy song to dance to. <laughs> but remember, they did three dances. Mm -hmm. So they, three song stop set. Yeah, so it, it wouldn't all be crazy up tempo. Right. Shake your money maker. They 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 mix it up, and uh, that that was definitely one of them. Also, love to love. Love to love. Is it called Love to Love that song? Yeah. And it was also uh they, they play some cult. Yeah. Underrated strip club music sure. there. So Vinny, you you went out, you uh caught your breath, you rubbed one out in the parking lot, and then what? Yeah. Well that <laughs> that calmed me down. Then I realized I had the antidote to uh ever having another panic attack. You just rub one out. You know, you mentioned strip joint songs. You know, growing up in Louisiana if you were able to get to a strip joint, they would let you in. And I remember coming back from LSU games on, you know, Saturday nights, there were two. There was one called Southern Comfort, and Comfort was spelled with a K. Um, <laughs> that, that place went on until just a few years ago when some church finally had it closed down. It was pretty swanky because they have the, the champagne room. Yeah. Um, wow. The other one was called the Whiskey River. And that place, whenever I pulled in there, I would always park my truck backwards <laughs> because you you might have to make a quick exit. Why? It's a rough and tumble strip, place. Strip club, <laughs> strip club music. You haven't lived till you've been to the Unicorn in Tijuana, where they just had a, a guy playing a dented trumpet, another guy with a two-piece drum kit, and another guy with a big guitar, and they, they're old men. And they just sat in the corner. They were up on stage, but like off to the sides, like that and that and that. That can't like, be it danced was to. All fucking live. What? What's the move for the ladies with the ranchero? Uh, they would play everything. It all kind of sounded this like ranchero. Awesome. This can't <laughs> exist anymore. I'm sure the the union is much too strong and prevented that. Ask out, put their foot down. Yeah. Hey, Vinny. Thanks for uh, the update. I appreciate it. <laughs> You guys have a great day. Take care. Bye. Panic attack. Wow. At the happiest place on earth. That's right. All right. Sorry. Where were you? Well, we've done the Oscars. We've talked about it. But there are some clips that I think are worth playing. So let's let's do a couple of those. Um, it, not the opening monologue per se, but Amy Schumer's sort of opening monologue on her own had some great jokes in it. I have a couple that uh, I think you'll enjoy. Um the way she introduces herself, talk about a, a, a nice uh, self-deprecating humor. No offense to the person she's talking about. This is how it starts. I'm back. I'm Amy Schumer, or as they know me in Hollywood, Melissa McCarthy said no. Wow. Nice joke. Uh, next, she goes on to talk about um, women's rights in a way. Inspirational, isn't it? It's just... After years of Hollywood ignoring women's stories, this year we finally got a movie about the incredible William sisters' dad. That was a great joke. That's funny. Shana yes, came, the, came the knowing nod. He That's could right. Laugh at that He's one. allowed to laugh at that one. I'm mad at the internet because I missed the opening monologue and I just typed in opening monologue mm -hmm. so I could go back and watch it. And Amy Schumer came up. Yeah. I didn't see the other gals. With, yeah, they they had a couple jokes, you know, another one like that. Um, the three of us are hosting together because it's cheaper than one white man. Oh, you missed DJ Khaled? Oh, oh I yeah. missed him. Yeah. That was bizarre. Of course it was. But it was bizarre for Khaled. What did he do? Nothing. Oh, he, came yeah, on the, he came on the stage and was a hype man for 11 seconds. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host for the 94th Academy Award. DJ Khaled! Hold up, 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 hold up. Let me introduce the 94th 
the three queens right. Let me introduce this the right way. I'm talking about actresses, it's, it's comedians, moguls, oh, bosses. Wow. Yes. I'm talking about y'all. Man, the outfits look amazing. Oh, wow. They didn't believe in us. The Oscars us. did. Oh. You know say, yo, Will Smith, bad boys for what we All doing? Right. You know we the best. Why right? do we do that? We do it. We, we do it. Okay. And now he's gone. No, I get. I, I, is that the joke that he doesn't know that they're all making fun of him? That he goes and tries to steal anyone, everyone's thunder when they come on stage. I I think he's earnest about this. Yeah. But I'm saying, are, but we but we get that it's a joke that he does. You know what I mean? Like they've know. been introduced. They're coming out. He has to stop everything and make it about him. That's no. a long way to go for a weird joke. I, yeah. I think he's also blowing the lid off his own cover, like. <laughs> We're on to you now. I mean, first off, I don't know, a uh, 15 second rap, something that rhymed or something right. that was like, come on, hold up, 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 hold up. Look at that dress. <laughs> hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Look at these. You do the comedy and he, she's with the actress person. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. Look at that gown. Hey, man, Will Smith kicking it bad boys for life. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Yeah. What? She does jokes. She's got the gown. Sequins. Woo. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Like, it's like, uh, it, it, like we thought. <laughs> That's the most I've ever enjoyed. Gina <laughs> yeah. We New thought you again. didn't do anything before. Now we know yeah. you don't do anything. That's why I thought it was a joke. Well, it was, but. But it was like, it was like, we need a hype man, do you? Mm. I if, if it was a joke, it was poorly conceived. Like, I'm really? not. It didn't really have a button on it. He just kind of walked out, make some noise, like he's leaving. Okay. By the way, yeah, okay. I, so, I got to see that again. I got to oh. see it again. I didn't even see that. It, it's. I thought he just announced it. I didn't know he walked out. Interrupted after they, it <laughs> after they got out there. Gentlemen, please welcome your host for the 94th Academy Award, DJ Khaled. Hold up, 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 hold up. Let me introduce the three queens right. Let me introduce this the right way. I'm talking about actresses, comedians, moguls, bosses. I'm talking about y'all. Man, the outfits look amazing. Oh, man. Wow. They didn't believe in us. The Oscars did. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yo, Will Smith, bad boys for what we All doing. Right. You know we the best, right? right? Yeah. You know how we do it. We, we Let's go. go. We Make some it. noise. Come on. Okay. Yes, sir. By the way, when you work in Hollywood as an actress, when they don't believe in you, but the Oscars does, <laughs> you, you're doing all right. Yeah, you're on track. You know what I mean? Nobody believed in me except for Nike. <laughs> <laughs> It's a second-rate basketball player, and the only one that took a chance on me is a little upstart mom-pop shop. Mom pop shop called Nike. Nike and Apple. Nike, Apple, and GM <laughs> in the country of China. There's the only <laughs> folks that ever... Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, DJ Khaled just pretty much mansplained that introduction. Well, uh, there's a female there's a voiceover female, yes. announcer. Yeah. Um, Upon third viewing, I think now it's supposed to be in contrast, right, to the stuffy traditional right. ladies and gentlemen. He's like, oh, no, this is not your dad's Oscars. Right. This, this is, we're hyping. But as right, he's leaving lady, the stage. Shut up, lady. You don't know how to introduce it. I'm going to do it right. <laughs> but as he's leaving the stage, they're going, okay, we got it. And so I thought it's supposed to be a joke on him, but I, I one can only hope. Well, I... I will tell this to any young comedian talking. When a bunch of smart people are confused <laughs> as to what happened, yeah. mission not accomplished comedically. Yeah. Right. Well, let's let's do the other two jokes that were pretty funny with um with Amy Schumer. She talks about the movie that people went wild when they brought up uh, Don't Look Up. What other movies are nominated? Don't Look Up is nominated. <laughs> yes. Yep. I guess the Academy members don't look up reviews. <laughs> Pretty solid joke. Yeah, it's solid. And, it's, she yeah. did a good job of it. Well, it's fun, not that yeah. it's, it's okay. Like I, I, because I'm picturing myself writing that joke and Jimmy going, hmm. "It's an eight. Sorry, right. <laughs> but uh, eight would be it generous. Oh, no, that's His true. scale that's true. only goes to seven. <laughs> it doesn't have a touch. Okay. Well, the last joke um, I think people enjoyed the most. I don't know why this particular person she's roasting wasn't there. Um, 
But then I want to get your opinion on something right after the joke. Go ahead. <laughs> and I mean, Leonardo DiCaprio, what can I even say about him? It's, he's done so much to fight climate change and leave behind a cleaner, greener planet for his girlfriends. It's funny. Because he's older and... The, Okay, and great I like, joke. I like that explanation. Everybody, yeah. everybody loved it. He wasn't there. They didn't put the camera on him anyway. However, you know how we talk about you know, a lot like, oh, he stole my joke. They stole my joke. But those jokes are kind of in the ether. Well, somebody put up this tweet from December 23rd of last year, which is literally word for word. Um, someone named Nicole Conlin. It says Leonardo DiCaprio is so passionate about climate change because he wants to leave a better world for his girlfriends. So how, what do we think? There is it just kind of, intellect, you know, we, we all would have come to that conclusion at some point. I was trying to think about, uh, there was a specific joke I was trying to think of, but it, it's, it's like, it's that kind of Leah Thompson speed swimmer, the swimmers at Thomas. Leah Thomas, Leah Thomas, not Caroline in the city. Yeah. yeah different one. Yeah. You know, it's like you. You know, if any of you ladies don't think I can compete, you can suck my dick. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, and it was like when we were talking years ago about like building the wall, the Mexico. Well, who's going to build that wall? Mexicans. Right. You know, like there's right. certain jokes. You, you pass the sign that says "Jumbo Shrimp" right. on it, or you know, "Oxymoron" or something. There's like jokes that are just anybody with. It's why they're stealing jokes, and then there's all comedic minds being somewhat on the same page right. and would approach things the same way. So it's a great yeah. joke. And also, you don't you don't know. See, here's the real problem. Uh, Amy Schumer's got a bunch of writers. Somebody could have seen that tweet three years sure. ago, and then it gets lodged in your head. Right. And what people do is. When they hear something funny and they give it a little bit of time, they'll just sort of make it theirs. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I had this idea or whatever. And then they go pitch it right. and they go, oh, okay, Cheryl wrote this joke. Well, Cheryl heard it from somebody else and then Amy did it, but that doesn't right. yeah. it doesn't mean it's like someone giving you stolen goods. It's not A to B. Right. Um, I have an award because the speeches were dull-ish, you know, except for a couple. Um, not super political, Mm -hmm. But Jessica St Chastain, who I, again, uh, obsessed with uh, her role as Tammy Faye Baker, she did a phenomenal job. She did what I would imagine you would consider the blowhard speech of the year. Um, and here's just a snippet of the end. She's referring to the, you know, what everyone's deemed the don't say gay bill in Florida. We're faced with um, discriminatory and bigoted legislation that is sweeping our country um, with the only goal of further dividing us. For any of you out there who do, in fact, feel hopeless or alone, I just want you to know that you are unconditionally loved for the uniqueness that is you. Yeah. So, just reach there you into go. the blowhard hamper and grabbed a handful of whatever. Jesus Anthony Christ. Hopkins fell asleep. <laughs> you see that? Yeah, like a horse. She is up. the handsome, she is a handsome woman. That's yeah. my example. Angular. Yeah. Meg, um, God, who's I thinking of? Meg, not Tilly. Right. Meg Ryan. Meg Ryan is cute. Yeah. She's handsome. Once in a while, there's handsome women mm -hmm. out there. Like um, like Gina Davis. Yeah. She's kind of cute Sigourney and Weaver. handsome. Yeah. Sigourney Weaver's handsome. There's a, it, you have to have a long neck and like a striking, you know, they'll have like a cleft a in their jaw. chin and yeah. stuff like Rene that. Rene Russo's handsome. Yes, they would make good looking men. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. that there's a handsomeness to women. And then the wi the the guys that are sort of leading whatever. I well, look at her. She's so good looking. Yeah. Too bad she got a fucking ten cent head. But then the Johnny Depps, they're pretty. So pretty. They're pretty. Yeah. It, it, it's a kind of a weird flip the script yes. thing. Many of the most striking women in the world, they're like handsome women and the biggest teen heartthrobs mm -hmm. are always pretty. Johnny Depp, 21 Jump Street. Prettiest. The prettiest, the prettiest word of the ball. Richard Grieco. No! Oh! <laughs> Sorry. Actually, it was pretty handsome. Didn't mean to one up you. No, you're he's, right. He's a like, bit of all right. Uh, pff, they ain't just whistling Dixie. Um, do we care to play the audio of the slap? Have we covered that 
Everyone who's heard it has yeah. probably heard it by now. I had I a think feeling. We got it. Okay, so yeah, they are thinking about um, asking for that Oscar back, and I'll I'll keep you posted. Um, ratings, though, the Oscar back's got to be one of those. Uh, okay, we all agree we should get that Oscar back, right? Okay, Ted. <laughs> who's I want the you to new go PA? to the uh, Smith House over there, and uh, you just. Tell him you need that thing back, all right? Oh, uh, okay. Well, am I going alone? Um, I'll yeah. just go grab the Oscar. Well, I, but does he know? I'm, will he know? He will me? once you ring the doorbell. Well, before then, will he know that I'm? Um, is there a window? I, got... I think he's got to have an inkling. <laughs> well, we should probably have that conversation first. Just go it's... grab the Oscar, and we'll just go ahead and relabel it. And we'll make it like a lifetime achievement award for DJ Khaled in twenty years or something. The man is prone to violence. I feel. Awkward. I, you know, see, that's where we differ. I think he got it out of his system. Oh, you think one and done? You know, the best place to be after a tsunami is right where the tsunami hit. That's a really good point. I'll be back. Hey, can you swing by Panera on the way? Actually, swing by on the way there. (laughs) Yeah, not on the way back. And then circle back and drop it off and then go. Grab uh, Mr. Smith's uh, Oscar. If I get it you? on the way there, won't it spoil by the time they get back? Would it make more sense to hit it on the I, way back? I, I don't know. Does everything need to be vetted with you, Ted? Or Are you can just swing by the Panera. These are reasonable questions. <laughs> just... Yeah, sorry. Uh, one thing we didn't uh, we didn't touch on was that during the commercial break, um, some people did go up to him. It wasn't security. It was Denzel Washington and Tyler Perry mm-hmm. um, giving him a little pep talk. And uh, Sean Diddy Combs said at the Vanity Fair after party that Smith and Rock have moved on and it's not a problem. It's over. He said he can confirm it's all love and they're brothers. So we're just taking P. Diddy's word for that, I guess. Um, And then in the, uh, I can't emphasize, six-minute acceptance speech from Will Smith, he goes on and he, again, he apologizes to everyone but Chris Rock. And he even says, like, Denzel just told me that, what was it? Like, the farther you get to the top, like, the devil's waiting for you. And it's like, Mm -hmm. okay, that didn't really explain what I was hoping for. But here's a snippet from his very tearful, very emotional speech. I know to do what we do, you got to be able to take abuse. You got to be able to have people talk crazy about you. In this business, you got to be able to have people disrespecting you. And you got to smile and you got to pretend like that's okay. I want to apologize to the Academy. I want to apologize to my, all my fellow nominees. Um, Art imitates life. I look like the crazy father, just like they said. <laughs> but love will make you do crazy things. I, I, I don't really, does that seem a little hollow? Like in this business, you have to put up, like, yeah, but you're handsomely rewarded. The rest, uh, all kids are bullied online and then they kill themselves. They're not handsomely rewarded. Uh, yeah, I mean, Hollywood always kind of does that. They kind of make it about them, and then they do that thing where nobody believed in them yeah. kind of thing. And it's like, I don't know. Does anyone really believe in anybody? It's a long, <laughs> Everything's a long shot, and you have yeah. the talent, and things have been pretty good. Yeah, be grateful. For you and your career. And and also, I, people apologizing because they're like passionate people. They're like, I'm loving you. You just went and struck a guy in the face. That's not, sorry, I care too much. Right. You know what I mean? I, hey, young I'm infant, protective father. I got to put cigarettes out on you because I care too much. Like, it's a little, I love too hard. Yeah. yeah. In the wild speculation department, number one, I'll never forget, <laughs> still laugh about it, when you, um, <laughs> you declared, no, you said that I were talking John Travolta many years ago, and you said, uh, "Oh my, John Travolta, something he finds his sexuality burdensome." <laughs> yeah, yes. there was some version That's of right. that. There isn't, there isn't a world where Will Smith, uh, an actor of previous generation, came up in a previous generation, is struggling with things outside of his uh, control and outside of his purview. Also, uh, super fan Giovanni uh, emailed me with a very long email and suggested, and they um, reported that uh, Will Smith is on a heavy dose of steroids and testosterone and oh. HGH. For something mm. upcoming Again, or just wild personal? Specul- well, I think he got old and out of shape. Uh, Oh. Eh, speculation. That's it. Do you remember I said years ago, I was like, 
There's going to be a weird a scandal where like Hollywood actors are getting fucking jacked at an old age and they're on high doses of like HGH and steroids mm-hmm. and well, creatine and yes. maybe, maybe Interesting. more will come out. Yeah. Well, it could be the sort of <coughs> Taylor Hawkins thing, which is like, it's just a soup. Like it's a, it's this, it's pot, it's booze, yeah. it's this, it's that, yeah. it's an enlarged heart. You know, we're, we're, we live in a world where it's like, we want to know Bob Saget hit his head. What happened? Yeah. You, you know coach. what I mean? But it's mostly they're on eight different things mixed with some pre pre-existing something. And they all came together that, that night. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it could be everything. It could be Will Smith's having uh, finding his sexuality burdensome. <laughs> Still like Mr. Funny. Travolta. Still funny. It could be a relationship with his wife that mm. is strained, mm. and we've all heard the stories of her. It and what could, a valiant gesture to go up there and defend your lady's honor if you're trying to get out of the doghouse. It could be, I've got uh, three weeks to lose 15 pounds, and mm. I'm going to go at it as hard as I can, mm. so I look as good as I can do with all these supplements and whatever. It could be uh, check the biorhythm wheel, Brian. <laughs> oh, oh right. extra critical when's, day. When's his birthday? The physical yeah. is low. Could it's be a very good question. Could be a biological thing. Yeah. Could be something about uh, nobody knows, but I'm, I'm weaving everything in. Maybe seven years ago, uh, someone said to Will Smith that Chris Rock was talking shit about mm. him or something at a club doing a stand-up set or Are something. You, Are you being him- serious? Yeah. Because at the Oscars in 2016, Chris Rock made some jokes about Will and uh, especially Jada. There, there's like history. I don't know if you guys knew that. There, there oh, you go. Oh, right. Is, yeah. Was it like the the Oscar so black, or no, I mean, Oscar was, so white the, stuff? The joke was something along the lines of like, Jada Smith says she'll boycott the Oscars. Yeah. That's yeah. like me boycotting Rihanna's panties or, yeah. or right. whatever. It was right. yes. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. True. Well, so that something. stuff sticks in the craw. Yeah. And then, um, then there's the accumulation mm-hmm. and then the explosion. Yeah. It's, it's it's rarely just one thing, you know? Well, I imagine each of them will be making statements in the next day or two. It'd be nice, yeah. but... Get okay, Garagos involved. I like, uh, I like rock. I like his approach. Yeah, of course. Um, well, we often talk about ratings of these shows and a significant ratings bump uh, this year from last year. CNN reports that the show drew an average of 15.3 million viewers. That was a 56% increase from last year. And uh, now... This is what I was trying to figure out. Are we timing this from two and a half hours into the show when Chris Rock got this shit slapped out of him? Or was this just in general people were more interested in the Oscars? Unclear, but there was a bump. I assume it's it could be people having tuned in for the last hour after they heard the news. Mm-hmm. But not sure when that <clears throat> what, what part of the show they're taking that from or if that's just an accumulation. Well, it's definitely a bump. I mean, yeah. last year was a dirge. It was such a bummer. Yeah. It really was. It's pretty rough. Well, I'm glad you brought up John Travolta because he is in the news and good for him. He's accomplished something big over the weekend that has nothing to do with acting. And he posted the big news online. I'm just going to let him tell you. Okay. So very proud moment in my aviation history. To add to my 747 and 707 licenses, I just received my 737 license and uh, it went very well. So uh, just sharing my moment with you. So he now can pilot a 737. Why? Where? When? Well, he's 68 years old and he's taken this big step, according to the Alliance Aviation, um, which is a training center that offers an FAA approved 737 course. It includes 80 hours of ground school, eight hours of system integration training and 36 hours of flight simulator. That's what I hear from my guys on the inside. Yeah. He never learned how to land it. Oh, Oh my God. Not this again. Yes. Yes. That's a new story right there. Keep our eye on that. He lives in one of those places in Florida where there's a hangar attached to his house. Oh. Good for him. But he already has licenses for other planes, like 747, I think. Much bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And do we like that he has finally committed to his look? And Brian, thoughts on his new shaved head? It was a long time coming. There there was a good decade and a half, if not more. Yeah. Where where it needed needed to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And I think he may have had a private jet that was a big full size jet not a 747 maybe it was a 707 i don't know but he does live in one of those places where they have the yeah hangers. apparently he's been into this since he was a teen like he's like 
Harrison Ford. I mean, they, mm-hmm. this, they didn't just get into this. Mm-hmm. So good for him. Um, do we have time for one more? One more. Okay. If you live in Singapore, you know we talked about um, organ donation and how we should get one free uh, pass with the popo if we're organ donors. Check it at the DMV. Mm-hmm. Get out of one moving violation. Yeah, great idea. Singapore likes the cut of your jib, but they're taking it a little more seriously. If you live there, you don't have a choice. You have to be an organ donor with one little loophole. Um, That's the law that requires everyone over the age of 21 to be an organ donor. The only other option is if you say you're not donating your organs, you want to keep them with you when you're buried, um, you can. But if you ever need an organ transplant, you will automatically be moved to the bottom of the list. I'm, uh, you know, we, we do a thing where we go, you know, why is that, you know, medically sound or why would you? It's like, it makes sense to me. Yeah, Sign up or don't, but why should, don't you want some incentive for the people who do sign up? Yeah. It kind of reminded me of when, you know, when the conversation about COVID was, okay, fine, but if you get sick from COVID, you're not, you're not going to the head of the line when other people are in the emergency room. Yeah. There's a, it's a weird thing. It's, it is. It's kind of like abortion. It's like there's, there's. It's not just this if or you that. You want an abortion? You're going to the. Back. <laughs> there's a kind of nuance yeah. to it. Like, well, we can agree this, but no one wants that, right. you know. And the, the this is the problem with this kind of stuff. Yeah. And the COVID's a little more nuanced, but this is a little more straightforward. Yeah, to and me. for a country that is like, if you're gonna drop your chewing gum on the floor, that's a Canaan. Yeah. This makes sense. This is yeah. a good rule. They could do that here, except for. People would not sign up for it, and then they'd need new kidney, and then they'd go down to MacArthur Park and get a forged license yeah, with a yeah. sticker on it. True. Then, all right, let's bring it home. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. It didn't suck. Gina, Gina Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad. All right. You can go to uh, AdamCroll.com for all the live shows. Helium coming up May 6th and 7th. Be doing some live pod there, some live stand up there in Huntington Beach. Sea Legs, we're going out. It's a fun outdoor arena. That's uh, May 20th. We'll do a live pod there. Comedy Works coming up in Denver, June 24th, 25th. So go to AdamCroll.com. Check out my Truth Yeller series. We got Leno, we got Riggle, we got TJ Miller, we got Shatner up there. And until next time, Adam Crow for Christian Toto and Gina Grad and Ball Bryan. Say it. Mahalo. Is it bad? I don't no. know where this comes from. jumped off to her in Genesis and Gallery. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> I love her credits. Like that's <laughs> you jerked like, off to her. You jerked off to her in swings. Like you've seen her at bus stops. <laughs> you've seen her at Burger King trying to ask for a free refill when they clearly don't give them. <laughs>